ask whether a foundation could could solve or could ha have solved the, the problem of social housing in France, uh, since um, obviously in France the, the housing problem is unsolved at the moment, and and there are no foundation to help solving it. So uh, the the you know the, the the answer might be extremely simple, but in in fact I would like to div to elaborate a bit because it's uh, and to make uh, of this question a case study uh, in how uh, the French do not use the foundation to s in order to solve social problems. So um, uh, I won't be talking much about foundation except to show where um, we miss them. Uh, and and um, I'll be quick enough to leave enough time for Hussein and, and for the round table. Uh, you know that the, the housing crisis might be uh, an invariant of, of uh, French social history since uh, I found some traces of, of housing crisis in Louis Sébastien Mercier's Tableau de Paris, which was written in 1781. And then there, there are, you know, uh, foundational texts about, or seminal texts about the housing crisis, the text by Henri Cellier in 1921. Henri Cellier was the, the main promoter of uh, Garden City movement in France, and then the famous call of Abbé Pierre in 1954. There are you know, uh, landmarks of uh, um, manifestos of housing cri crisis in French history. But the, the housing crisis seems to be everlasting since at the moment uh, uh, everyone knows that it's quite difficult for young people uh, in, uh, in Paris and around to find a decent and affordable place to, to house themselves. Um, um, it might happen, though, that the, the, the conscience of housing crisis might be stronger than the housing crisis itself in France, uh, since if we look at recent uh, EU statistics uh, about, you know, the, um, uh, the, the title, the exact title of, of this uh, map is um, Housing Related Severe Deprivation in, in Europe. So the, the percentage of people which are civilly deprived in relation to housing in France is less than 10%, where well it's above 20% in most Eastern Europe and even in Italy. So it seems that the housing crisis is not as strong as, uh, as it is in, in, you know, in, the, in the contemporary uh, talk or conscience, uh, or c conscience of, of young people. In fact, uh, things are far worse in Western Europe, but still um, we think that there are problems which are not solved. Uh, and and this, uh, this, this problem might be rationalized and might be um, maybe put in a more objective way than simple conscience of, of uh, a housing crisis. Um, the most enduring problem during the, the whole period, I mean since the, the beginning of the 19th century, has been rural flights, which created of course um, um, excessive excess demand on, on housing in cities or in urban areas. And, and also growing population. But there, uh, France has a paradoxical, um, uh, situ is in a paradoxical situation in comparison with, with uh, the rest of Europe, because uh, while most Europe experienced a growing population from um, the early 19th century to the mid uh, 20th century, in fact, uh, the French population has been stagnating during that period, and it has been increasing quite quickly since the last uh, the Second World War, because uh, uh, as far as I remember, uh, the French population in 1945 was uh, around 40 million, where it's close to 67 million right now, which means that the population has increased by more than 50 percent in the last 17 years, which is not the case uh, for most European countries. And at the moment, you know, the demographical pressure is stronger in France than in any other European country, with the notable exception of England, which also has some uh, housing problem, especially around London. So, so the, the, the housing crisis in France is mostly related to, uh, to excess demand uh, linked with growing population and with population concentrating in urban areas. But there might also be a specific problem around cultural buildings. Uh, I would like to insist on it. It, it doesn't seem to have to do, to, to do with housing, but it's you know housing uh, collective activity, not just uh, housing people. So if, if we review the, the crisis uh, since rural flight has begun, 
Uh, what do we saw? We, we do saw that during Ancien Regime, the poor uh, usually came to, to, to cities and especially to Paris during hard times uh, in order to beg alms. And uh, um, exactly as um, Tillman has put it, uh, there were these institutions which are, were not very specialized but which provided relief for the poor, were they uh, ill or sick or, uh, or uh, old or um, hungry or whatever. And the uh, Paris Hotel Dieu then provided relief to the, the poor coming to the city for, to, in order to beg alms for centuries. But uh, at the beginning of the early modern era, in fact, the Hotel Dieu evolved into um, a health-related institution, not just um, uh, an indistinct uh, service providing institution for the poor. So from the 1613 on, it was no longer um, able to, um, give, to provide relief for all the poor, and another institution was, was created as another foundation Foundation. It was the famous Hôpital Général, which was uh, described by Michel Foucault. And, and the, the, the way the Hôpital Général took care of both the poor and the housing problem was simply to lock in the poor. It was the phenomenon called by Foucault the Grand Enfermement. So, in fact, prison can be a, a solution to the housing crisis. It's also a solution that has been, uh, I think, uh, ex experienced by the U.S. during the 1960s and 1970s. Uh, but, in fact, at the moment, it doesn't seem, uh, well, I mean, now, uh, it doesn't seem a, a really sustainable nor, nor um, desirable mean to, to, to cure the housing problem. So maybe we shall find something different from the, the general hospital Although it was, it's, it's quite a nice place you can still visit because it's, it's quite close to, to here. Hein. C'est l'actuel Pitié Salpêtrière was the general hospital, which was a foundation. Unfortunately, uh, a foundation that was not self-sustaining, so it has to rely on additional taxes. So, in fact, it, it, it's quite interesting because it's at the heart of the debate we had between, you know, uh, zakat and, and self-reliance in order to found uh, social uh, works. Um, as the Industrial Revolution began, um, well, I know the, there, there is a controversy whether the revo Industrial Revolution existed in France, etc., but whatever. With the rising industrial industry in France, uh, many educated observers were concerned uh, and appalled by the, the housing condition of the working class, which uh, uh, concentrated in the city, and, and the impact of very poor housing condition on the health of the working class and they advocated building better houses for the poor and the example of those uh, educated observers was Le Louis Villermé which was um, um, a physician from the Academy of Medicine who wrote about and it's quite simple because he wrote um, a prominent book every 10 years so one about mortality in in the district of the city of Paris uh, one about um, the what is called the tableau de l'état physique et moral des ouvriers that is a picture of the um, moral and physical state of workers and then uh, about uh, a book about um, you know um, working class housing uh, but in fact, this, this is more about theory than abo about really solving the or addressing the housing problem. So uh, what Villermé had to offer is not much, but what was offered by that time was paternalism, shall I call this this way, that is business corporation who, uh, which built housing for their workers, the most uh, famous are Schneider at Le Creusot and Meunier at Noisiel. Um, th there is, there is uh, uh, much about the, the Meunier, um, uh, um, uh, well, the, the, the houses that were built by Meunier at the Musée d'Orsay because uh, the, the architecture of the houses built in Meunier was quite interesting. The problem was that only large corporations were able to found housing for their, their um, workers and in fact so there were not many examples and I'm sorry this is quite unreadable but the most interesting example was located in Mulhouse in Alsace where in fact most industrialists of the city joined together to uh, um, uh, uh, built to found uh, an association which built social housing for all the workers in the city. Unfortunately, or, or well, whatever. In fact, Mulhouse became German. So the, the only interesting example of uh, successful paternalism went out of France. So I cannot <laughs> talk about it anymore. And and in fact, the, the housing problem worsened with um, uh, with with in fact um, uh, uh, increasing uh, rural flight and. 
and increasing uh, industrial growth um, f in, in the late 19th century and, and with the beginning of a, of a new cycle. So these two uh, slides have been inverted. This one is far more readable than the preceding one. Um, so, in fact, paternalism was not enough, so we had to find something else. So, the other uh, solution that was proposed by the Third Republic were, were tax incentives. So, the Loi Siegfried uh, offered tax incentive for chartered companies offering habitation à bon marché, that is bargain housing. But habitation à bon marché, HBM, was, was the acronym for uh, social housing in France. Uh, so the loi Siegfried, in fact, uh, offered tax incentive to chartered companies. But the problem is that chartered companies had to be uh, authorized by the, the government, so they were quite uncommon and difficult to uh, to uh, to found and and they were not very numerous so in order to uh, uh, provide um, uh, more momentum to the social housing movement the loi strauss was uh, passed in 1906 and it extended the tax incentive to uh, cooperatives uh, which were offering also bargain housing and this did not work well because in fact no such cooperatives were founded uh, although cooperatives worked well especially in the Netherlands as a winning corporatius in Scandinavia I think too and to a lesser extent in Germany so so by that time the French were experiencing with uh, uh, you know the the, the, the recipes or the, the the expedients that worked in other countries and, and they didn't work in France so so we had to do something else and and when nothing works in France uh, what do you do well uh, before we look at what was done we, we, we shall ask why not foundation in fact, uh, there is only one example of a foundation providing housing uh, for the working class and the poor, which is the Groupe des Maisons Ouvrières, which was founded as a société civile. And a société civile means no limited liability and no, no uh, uh, judici judicial person. So, in fact, société civile is, is purely... Um, uh, a way of designating some, some estates, but they, were, they remain property of their owner. And so the Groupe des Maisons Ouvrières, which is often called Fondation Le Body, in fact, had, had, the Fondation Le Body had no uh, uh, foundational form before 1987, before, before a law was passed in, the, in France in order to, to, to give a legal form to foundations. So th there are other instances of so called foundations which provided housing services. Uh, but in fact, they were not foundation. They were either associations or uh, such civil society or whatever. Uh, um, so we might think that there was no need hence for private, ca for private capital to, to solve the housing problem, uh, not because there was no housing problem, but because in fact there were, there were no legal provisions to allow the uh, private capital to um, contribute to the solution of the uh, housing problem. Uh, you can still see in Paris some uh, houses built by the Fondation Le Body, but in fact that Fondation Le Body, remember, is, is only um, a, a brand for, uh, for uh, what was mainly Madame Le Body, um, Lady Le Body's own property, which was then given to an association which went to become a foundation when foundations were given a legal status in the 1980s. So, um, now, uh, no, um, b basically, uh, all the solutions we, we reviewed uh, did not function well. So, so from the 1912 on, um, direct state inter intervention was uh, appeared to be the only solution. So, the Loi Bonnevay offered to local communities the, the possibility to, to create housing bureaus, which were the office de HLM. And then these housing bureaus were, were in fact, uh, funded directly by the state through the Loi Loucher, which also, in fact, um, allowed for uh, funding personal housing uh, through bank loans. Uh, and in the meantime, in fact, the housing problem became a real problem since the, the, the housing prices were suppressed in 1914 with the war, which means that basically the, the housing prices were completely blocked from 1914 to 1938. Uh, and, and with blocked uh, housing uh, prices, the, um, 
of course the, the rents were really low but also it created a, a huge demand which cannot be satisfied because nobody could build houses in order to rent them at a price which was blocked at pre-1914 prices and I must remind you that during the first world war the inflation was 500 percent which means that that basically the, house, the, the rents were divided by five in terms of purchasing power during the time of the first world war so the the housing problem really worsened during the first world war not just because of the destruction of the war but also because of the suppression of, of prices and the, the only solution that was um, invented w were in fact uh, state-funded programs through uh, municipal bureaus and and those programs developed from the interwar period to the 1970s with, with some some successes for instance you can see all around paris on the uh, previous zone non edificandi there are many many such um, uh, blocks which were built dur during the interwar period and then right after the war there were also the grand ensemble which were built during the uh, 1960s and 1970s and so this photograph shows the, the contrast between you know the, the old kind of, of building which were uh, rather um, um, unhealthy and and the new grand ensemble which means uh, basically uh, large buildings uh, which were built during the 1960s the, the problem is that those grand ensembles although they were quite comfortable and and, uh, and spacious they led to uh, some social problems which which were experienced in all countries uh, which had built some some social uh, this kind of concentrated social housing and so there were somewhat um, uh, um, eligible for a social treatment which was basically raising them during the 1980s and, and from that time the, the, the new uh, solution which was, find to, which was found or which was um, uh, um, uh, used uh, as a policy tool for so social so housing problem was basically subsidy either subsidy to, to uh, renters uh, the so-called aide personnalisé au logement or sub subsidized loans, uh, which were called prêts aidés par l'État. And of course, uh, when you implement a demand side policy while a supply side is, uh, is slowing, the result is an, an increase in prices. Okay, so, so the, next, the next graph will show you how much the, the prices increased in, in France. But I would like to insist that the next graphs do not show only the prices, they do show the prices in terms of of uh, disposable incomes of the um, of the households so it means for instance that the rents they not just not well, sorry the rents not just increased by 20 percent since their lowest point in the 1920 in the 1970s when those new policy tools were implemented they grew by 20% percent, percent, 20 percent more than the disposable income of the households which were renting houses. So although the, the, the households were provided with uh, housing subsidies, in fact the rents grew more quickly than the, the income including the, 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 subsi the, the housing subsidies. Plus the house prices were uh, multiplied by by, by well they they uh, were multiplied by two uh, including uh, the um, the increase uh, in in, uh, in in housing subsidy and in uh, subsidized loan etc and and hence so these increases are not increases of the, the neither the current prices of rent or of houses neither the prices including inflation but the play the, the prices including inflation and growth of income from the households so it means that pr uh, real prices have increased quite uh, quicker than the, the income of the households so in some respects the housing crisis has become um, uh, harsher because simply the, the housing the, the, the rents um, increased far more quickly than the, the incomes and if we look at the the geographical distribution of the housing crisis of course the housing crisis is far worse in paris than in um, than outside of paris but it's far far worse in paris and in now we call this les, les zones tendues it's the usual the way uh, um, we call the, the places where in fact it's it's quite difficult to find affordable uh, uh, housing 
So why then focus on foundation? Uh, why, why then ask what foundation could do in this, uh, in this environment? It, it is quite clear that the French problem is mainly related to growing population and concentration, especially in Paris and in some areas where uh, uh, the job market is, is, is good. In fact, uh, it is quite clear that a demand-side subsidy only leads to inflation and exclusion, and this had been demonstrated quite brilliantly by Rancière and, and Ouzad, who wrote a series of papers showing that um, the, the, the policy of distributing income in order to allow to, to, to make it more easy for people to, uh, to um, buy a house is a, is a complete failure, because in fact, um, uh, at the moment, well, after after 30 years of distributing purchasing power, uh, this policy led to exclusion of of the poorest from the um, uh, the most subsidized zones uh, and the most tense uh, areas. Uh, so we have a supply, si a supply side problem and it, it has nothing to do with foundation unless we think that the foundation could uh, built more easily than any other institutional form. But at the moment, no country seems to have relied on foundation to ease up the housing crisis. As um, Tillman has shown, um, there can be, well, most of the uh, housing policies made by municipal agencies. In some country, uh, foundations can help, especially Netherlands, and at the moment, I think Italy has a dynamical foundational sector. But uh, in most cases, the, the problem is, is mostly related to local uh, com um, community policy, not to foundation. There is something, well, in, in fact, in some respect, foundation could help because they, ca they could provide funding and they could also play uh, an active role in lobbying toward mayors that do not want to grant building permits, which seems to be a, an important limiting factor in, in France at the moment. But uh, foundations are, of course, no miracle solution to the housing problems in France. Um, there is, there is one issue that needs to be discussed, and in fact it's not related to personal housing, but maybe to the housing of, you know, uh, community activities. And, and in fact, in France, we, at the moment, we, we do have a problem with, with uh, um, you know, uh, historical heritage, which is uh, not maintained uh, on the one hand, so this is a ruined church, for instance, or more generally uh, about how do we fund um, places um, which can be used for, for religious cult or for cultural activities in general. We have a special problem simply because, you know, um, the 1905 law of separation, which separated the, the, ch the church or the, uh, the, the, yes, the church from the state, uh, did not provide uh, cult buildings with an endowment that's enabled to maintain them. Hence, today we have problem with uh, churches, buildings that were separated from the state in 1905 and that cannot be funded by any community. Because in, in, in small communities, small towns, sometimes there is not enough tax produce to, to fund the maintaining of the church. And, and sometimes there is no longer any religious community to take care of the building. So there is at the moment a, a problem for, to fund the, the maintenance of these buildings. And in fact, the French state has somewhat uh, used the foundation uh, recently by creating the Fondation du Patrimoine uh, in 1996 in order to take care of the cultural heritage, uh, which the state do, not, do no longer want to take, into, into, uh, uh, take care of. Okay? So the funny thing is that uh, we have seen that uh, Almost two centuries ago, the, the French state decided to nationalize all the estates of the religious communities. And now that the estate of those religious communities cannot be sold and is, is costly to maintain, the idea is to create a foundation that, that will take care of this, just to say that the state does not have to fund this anymore. So the model for creating the Fondation du Patrimoine was the National Trust in, in Britain. And uh, in fact, it's creating that foundation is simply a way for the state to get rid of the mission the state does no longer want to assume. 
But there is still a, there's still a question, which is uh, how can we now build new religious buildings, and and who will take care of them? And that's where the foundational model is quite interesting because. As we have seen, in fact, the idea of a self-reliant uh, estate or uh, the idea of creating a, a, a sustainable model for, for a building, for, a, for um, um, an estate, in fact, has never been in the, in the project of the state. And, and I think it's the moment to talk about this because we know that la République ne reconnaît ne salarie ni ne subventionne aucun culte, but now we have to think of the, the way we can sustain the, the culte. Uh, now that the, the state clearly does do, does not want to, to assume uh, neither um, the the remnants of past cults nor the future. Um, so. My conclusion is not about the way the foundation could ease the, 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 um, the housing problem when we think of housing as personal or family housing or household housing. The foundation can only play a marginal role and, and that marginal role is especially lobbying with the mayors. But there is another housing problem which, which is housing community activities and, and foundation is clearly a solution. Maybe not uh, um, a solution in any case but the solution that has be that has to be to be explained to the french to the french public because the french public usually is not conscious of what means a self-reliant or an autonomous or a, a sustainable uh, economic model and and that's that's the what what is at stake with foundations and 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 hence i wanted to make only this small case study in in uh, you know foundational rights in in the french legal system just to introduce hussein's example because hussein you will show us how uh Waqf can can um, uh, provide for a sustainable uh, activity with with uh, social benefits and um, an activity which is interesting for for a community uh, it, it might be not of general public interest but of in the inter in the interest of um, of of a definite community and it has to be self sustainable and so that's what we are looking at with uh, foundation so um, well, the last funny thing maybe is about you know transition from one religion to another. Um, I began with a French saying which was "qui trop embrasse mal étreint." I don't know whether you know this one, but there is a French saying which is uh, um, "aide-toi, le ciel t'aidera." That is no. Uh, God helps only those who help themselves. And in fact, this is this comes from a, um, a poem of Jean de La Fontaine. Uh, it's, it's the story about you know a, a cart driver and and the, the cart. Um, uh, the, 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 in fact, the guy falls and the cart uh, is, is ruined. And and he calls for Hercules, the Roman god, to help him. And Hercules answers. Hercules wants you to move yourself and do something about, about your situation. And the moral of this poem is, uh, heavens only helps those who help themselves. So this might be the, the ultimate response, the ultimate secular answer to the, to the housing problem. You know, um, heaven helps only those who help themselves. Thank you for your attention. And <laughs>